this started out as my grandparents' place. They moved here in the 30s, and I had that opportunity to purchase this from my folks and family, and in the 90s, uh, started on this place uh, running cattle and sheep, which is what was always here. At one time, they had a dairy as well, and uh, just trying to figure out a way to make it work. I was teaching school here in Newell, and, and um, didn't have the time to make the passes in the fields or to manage things like they should. But as we went along, we could see that um, by putting some management into the grassland and into uh, looking at how we kept diversity on the landscape, we were able to improve our livestock health as well as production. The options that diversity allows us in being able to withstand the ups and downs of markets in both livestock and sheep helps level out those peaks and valleys we run into from a financial point of view. And it just um, makes it work from year to year and not have a boom or bust or run into um, uh, shortfalls. We just kind of level out our income streams and can have some predictability in our outcomes as far as meeting those financial demands. Unfortunately, unless, you know, your payments are very small, like if you've, if you've been handed down your ranch from the previous generation, I mean, that's not the case for most of us and we have payments to make. So unfortunately, a lot of times as one or the other of the partners having a job in town is just necessary and you know for health insurance or things like that also and um, in our case I stayed home to raise the kids and Dave had his job in town and you know a lot of these practices I wish we had started earlier because it does make it easier to manage things you know there's a lot of things that would have been easier for me back then when he was in town and I was here so a lot of the practices that we put in place today make it a lot easier to run things on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of these grasslands that we have uh, tended to be um, severely overgrazed just because of their uh, proximity to cropland and confined systems. So as um, I moved back into this, we tried to figure out a way to, in a brittle environment, to try to hold water and, and produce more grass. And as we went through that, we found these practices to put in that would make that difference. And so we were looking at monocultures, heavy and smooth brome and crested wheatgrass, trying to figure out ways to improve the production and increase that diversity, both for livestock nutrition and rangeland health. And, and the big thing about keeping water, we're a 15 inch rainfall environment. Half of that comes in April, May, June. And then we've got to make use of what we get the rest of the year. So the whole idea is how do we capture water, keep it on the land and, and create a productive um, food source for our livestock. And, and so through that, we really found that by taking those principles of rangeland health, we were able to uh, increase that production, but also increase resilience. We really struggle with this time of year in August, it's hot and dry. How do we keep those nutrition levels up? And, and diversity makes that difference. So as we went down that path, uh, the diversity in livestock is every bit as important as the diversity in the plant community. So not only do the sheep and cattle provide different revenue streams and we put an emphasis on wool as a regenerative agricultural product too because the nice thing about sheep is they make good use out of undesirable plants many times weeds that cattle won't select for consumption and in this case we can uh, produce both a wool product a textile product and a uh, meat product with the sheep enterprise Dave and Holly and the boys, they've um, 
been talking about things they've been doing here on the ranch, um, you know, elevating their level of management to achieve their conservation goals. And, and Dave talked about it quite a bit. Um, he's looking at these rangeland health indicators and constantly looking to stay within the confines of the potential of this land, but really taking opportunities and optimizing potential here for not only their livestock productivity, but for wildlife, water quality, and all the other resource values that we're always looking at. With the principles that Dad uh, talked about, we like to have the cows run with the sheep so that we're getting two different forms of animal impact and helping our diversity to make it similar to what it was before European man came. I like trying to imitate the cow with the buffalo and the sheep with the antelope and deer and it's just interesting for me to try and mimic how our grazing was back then, how God designed it. How do we consider bringing the sheep enterprise into an operation and there's a lot of things to um, consider when you do that. The biggest thing is uh, you just cannot think of it from a profitability point of view without considering all the other aspects that go with that in both in infrastructure needs but also in in quality of life and is that something you're going to be okay working with uh, it is a lot easier for people to bring sheep into a cattle operation than for people to bring cattle into a sheep operation from an infrastructure point of view as you consider those things you need to know what your plant diversity is out there the old rule that um, was always out there is you can run one ewe behind one cow without having a competition for the forage resource and that's pretty true if your diversity stays what it should be in these plant communities in western south dakota you, if you get into um, a situation where your plant composition is primarily western wheatgrass and there's not a lot of forbs or shrubs or other short grasses, then you're gonna be in competition. But knowing that, you can still make use of those two enterprises together better than separately. You know, implementing good practices, we're taking better care of the land. And in taking better care of the land, then the animals that we run on that land are healthier also, which in the end means a healthier product for consumers when they go to their supermarkets. And so that is a really feel good thing that we can produce a really healthy product that will benefit a lot of people.